first of all, it doesn't really matter what the intentions were of the people who started the discussion on whether or not we should have a referendum on this treaty. That's not relevant. It's not relevant. What is relevant is that more than 400,000 people said that we should have a referendum on this treaty. That is the only thing that is relevant. And what is next to that relevant on April 6th is the question that's being asked to, to the Dutch electorate. And that question is, do you, are, you, are you in favor or against an association treaty between the EU and Ukraine? That's the only thing that's relevant, and that's the only thing that is in the legal sense relevant, because the law defined that there should be a referendum and that this should be the question. I'm not even interested in their opinions of these three people. I'm not interested in their opinions. I'm interested in your opinion and that of the voters of the Netherlands. Okay. And they will decide what will happen April 6th but then, and 7th. Then, Harry, uh, uh, talking about legal positions, um, now as we are you know, uh, uh, coming close to the referendum, uh, all kind of legal scholars, experts, um, today in the Financial Times, uh, uh, on the 8 o'clock news, uh, a scholar from uh, Leiden University, Wim Voermans, explain that uh, the impact of the no vote, if it will be a no vote, um, will be not that much because the economic part of the treaty is already the exclusive competence of the EU. So, you know, essentially it's a little bit much ado about nothing, which will cost us 30 million euros. Much ado about nothing? Trade, I'm not against trade. I'm not even against free trade, ladies and gentlemen. I, 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 might be critical, I might be critical about the neoliberal context of this treaty, but that's a different debate. The, the trade agreement is not what people object to, is my conviction. I think that people fear the political part of this agreement, and the political part is about foreign policy, is about security policy, is about defense, and other issues that should not be in a trade agreement. Here is a trade agreement with Morocco. It's 14 pages, 96 articles, all about trade. Nothing about security, nothing about defense, nothing about uh, the, 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 the way that the economy should be organized. This is, in many aspects, it looks more like a stabilization and association agreement that we have with countries on the Balkans. Okay, can you then, and then I will open uh, the floor to the others, uh, um, uh, explain why, according to you and your party, uh, uh, it will be good for the Ukraine not to have this association yes. agreement. <coughs> the problem in the Ukraine, in Ukraine right now, is instability. Instability internally, people are killing each other, about 10,000 people dead in, in an internal conflict. Um, there is a, an external problem with Russia. Um, Krim is already lost for Ukraine. Donbass, we don't know what the future is. We should help Ukraine to become a stable country. Now, if we, if we have a treaty that brings Ukraine fully into the European influence sphere, including aspects of security, defense, and foreign policy, then maybe a majority in Ukraine will feel at ease, at home in, in this, uh, in, in this uh, European sphere, but a part of Ukraine will not. And therefore, the conflict that is now killing people will not be solved. The Minsk agreements will not be delivered as they are not delivered today. And that will lead eventually to deepening and lengthening of the conflict. It will lead to a partition of the country and that is not only very bad for Ukraine, it's also very dangerous for other countries in the region. Look at Moldova and Transnistria. Look, in the end, we, would, we should even fear that it might have an influence on the Baltic states. So it is not good for the, the, the people living in Ukraine, and the instability will lead to very dangerous situa situations in the periphery in Europe. Okay, that's clear. Now, you must be touched, because we are not only bringing you flowers and tulips, but also peace. Right? <laughs> uh, look, it's, uh, it's great to have such a great crowd interested uh, in what will be coming next week. I am probably, probably the only person here 
who read the whole agreement because I was chief negotiator for the agreement for five years. So I don't have a text uh, of the agreement in front of me. I know it by heart, really by heart. And for me, it's not also in only the political point. For me, it's also personal conviction. But at the same time, it's also personal conviction for 75% of Ukrainians that the way of the association agreement is the way of reforms in Ukraine. And because of that, what we have in this agreement is the idea how to make Ukraine European country in the sense of our reforms, in the sense of democracy, because we had pro-Russian regime which destroyed democracy in Ukraine, which you were part of. about rule of law, which, which destroyed. Of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you know, I, I, I had been fighting with that, and I will also in the future. And my personal choice is to live in a free country, because this agreement is about democracy, freedom, and rule of law. And once sitting in the Normandy format, because Mr. Van Bommel just mentioned it, we were talking with our German and French colleague and Mr. Lavrov. And he told me, look, I report just for one person in Russia to the Russian President Putin. And I said, I report to Ukrainians. So you should ask Ukrainians whether they need the association agreement. <clears throat> and this agreement is not just about Ukraine. This agreement is also about Europe, because Putin has been waging the hybrid war, not only against Ukraine. In Ukraine, it's about delivering weaponry, delivering regular troops, delivering munition, everything to Donbass. In Europe, it's about paying politicians, paying journalists, Can and you? trying to... Thank you. <laughs> exactly, also you in Paris. No. You know, Front National, whether they get any kind of loan from Russia, it's a point. Yeah, yeah, I know it somehow, and many people know it, and it's official. So it's about changing the political landscape in Europe. In Europe. Why? And I'll tell you. It's about destroying the European Union as we know it, based on democracy, rule of law, and solidarity. And what Russia really fears is solidarity. And because of that, the whole association agreement is not about any kind of geopolitical constructions. This agreement is about the will of Ukrainian people. And because of that, there was months of people staying at the Maidan. Because of that, Regardless of any, you know, differences, the people have been fighting for Ukraine, for our independence, and for our choice to decide what to do with our freedom, and not the Russian intention to go back to Yalta to divide the spheres of influence. So it's about the association agreement. And my request, look to you, also my personal request, please come and vote yes, because you vote yes for Ukraine, you vote yes for Ukrainians, but you will also vote yes for the European Union and for democracy and human rights. The Dutch people were at the beginning of freedom in Europe, how we understand it. And this freedom is something we can't lose. Rob, can I just... Uh...